All right, welcome back to the Central Valley Buzz, everybody. I'm your host, Chuck Leonard. Sitting here with me now, Mr. Michael Bogart. What's going on? Hi, How Chuck. How are you? Good. good to see you. Good, good. Uh, My Michael has Aspect Ministries and uh, 21st Century Faith. Correct. And so how's, how's things going? Actually, things are going really great. I think uh, one of my uh, one of the, your viewers actually bought my whole package of books and Didn't videos. Did they really? Did, did we want to call out their name? Well, just thank, just say well thanks to the the lady with the initial B. We thank the lady with the initial B. She that's the one who's watching. Well, <laughs> I know that somebody out there is watching. But so they no, they bought all of your yeah books. yeah they just the I, whole catalog. I, I think she's a teacher, so she uses a lot of these. I think she's planning to use them a lot in the classroom. Really? So. How, how would a teacher use this? Because you have to be real careful about how you talk about Christianity in school. Well, yeah, um, you know, I wrote this because I've taught in secular classrooms on a college level for years you know and, and as a Christian I've had to learn how to do that effectively and, and non-threateningly um, and but the, the book is written on a kind of an academic style but you know very accessible in terms of its reading level and well, concepts. what is the reading level well I don't know I believe the Fresno <laughs> B I think I, I believe that's sixth grade yeah, probably. So what, 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 what do you think this I have at? never had this checked out. There are websites you can have them checked out on. I'm guessing this is probably about an 8th or ninth, maybe 10th okay. grade level. Yeah. All right. It's a little okay. bit more than Not the Not a bad age to have kids start reading well, and figuring things out, right? That's right, yeah. And I think a lot of people really are curious. Um, so, yeah, they, uh, I, it's now, a good read. Did you, were you able to talk to this lady that bought these, or was sure. it just one of those purchases? No, yeah, we talked. What was bit. the reason she bought them? She felt that they were a good resource because they are written kind of for a, a classroom. They're fact-based. They're not spun, at least not, you know, more than, I guess you'd say, reasonable. No, no, no more spun than you. Well, I mean, right. you know, <laughs> all of us have our spin and our opinion. Right. I mean, everybody does, but you try to keep it to where that's a minimal impact. And so, Was there one book that she was more interested in than the others? Uh, she liked my Islam video, especially the teacher's edition. With the teacher's edition, I give... Uh, you know, I, I have a, a bank of test questions. I have discussion questions. I've got all the PowerPoints. Um, I'm wondering what everything. grade she teaches. Oh, I think it's college level. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it, I'm very proud of these. And of course, uh, since we're it talking about them, Islam, you, you know, it's a very fact-based thing. Um, you know, and, and you need facts, especially on that one today. Let me because, ask you something. Yeah. What's, uh, you, you start off this book with, what's the big question? What's the big question in the Islam book? Well, people want to know if, if Islam really is a religion of radical violence or not. I think that's the one that's in people's minds these days, you know. That's what... 9-11 taught, taught a lot of people to think that way, didn't it? Well, certainly did. Well, and, and many events since then have caused people to think, well, that's a religion of violence. And that's simply not true. Most Muslims are not any more violent than any other group of people. Mo most, most follow the, the path of peace. Well, yeah, you know, they're just people living, trying to trying to do what almost everybody else is doing, and they happen to be Muslim. There is a radical branch, obviously, that we have to deal Isn't with. Isn't there a radical branch in, in, in every race? Well, I suppose so, although this one seems to be a very, very active <laughs> branch. Right. Right. But certainly that's true. I mean, you, you find uh, all religious groups, like in, 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 in India, you'll find radical Hindus that are doing violent things against other people. Can I so say on. there's some stores by my house uh, owned by some Hindu people, some Indian people, some Sikhs that are just the nicest people in the world? And uh, there's times when we, when we walk out of there just saying, gosh, that, those people are so nice. And that, that's the reason why we shop here. And then we kind of question it and say, I wonder if they're being that nice because they have to be. Well, I think especially in the case of the Sikhs, so many people mistake them for Muslims and right. they have nothing to do with Islam. So I, I think, you know, I, I would guess that much of the time they're, they've got a personal public relations campaign sure. going just to convince people, hey, we're not that. Right. So, Good uh, for them. Yeah, and there's a lot of Sikhs right here, as you know, there in the are. Central Valley. Yeah, <clears throat> certainly. The, the, the understanding... Uh, Mormon, they understand the Jehovah Witnesses, those have to be pretty popular too. Yeah, and you know, I, and I, people ask me, are you picking on the Jehovah's Witnesses or the Mormons? And, and the, the answer to that is no, it's what just... What picking on them? Well, yeah, because yeah. I wrote books and made videos about uh -huh. them. But the answer to that is, it's, it's, they're the ones people always ask about. They're the ones that, you know, that people are interested in. Do them they, and Scientology. Are they an e they're kind of <laughs> easy hit, right? I mean, well, they're, they're, they're visible. different. They're visible, they're out there, you know, you can... They're highly disciplined in what they do. Absolutely, yeah. You know, so people are, are interested. Nobody really asked me about the Buddhists because, well, I guess they're they're not the issue that. Well, you just don't see them that often. Well, yeah, they're not making 
issues. They're not making the headlines. So that's why I wrote about the Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses. The New Age, I wrote a book on. The Islam one, is that the, is that the number one? Islam probably sells the best, uh -huh. yes, on Amazon. And, and yeah. then you said New Age. Wait, new Age, you mean the, the, the New Thought type places? Well, New Age is one of those blanket sort of grab bag categories. You throw anything in that's got sort of United Eastern Church of Christ, those kind of people? No, or is no, that, no, Is no. that older? You're no, talking no. about newer stuff. We're talking about Scientology. We're talking about Theosophy. We're talking about Ikonkar, what used to be called Ikonkar. Uh, David Koresh, those people. All of that tends to go in that category. They're not necessarily even related to each other, but because they share some similar approaches, I guess you'd say, they get thrown in that New Age category. You know, Hinduism is an influence there. Some parts of Buddhism, Taoism, all influence the thinking of New Age groups. Okay. I don't know if you ever heard of Edgar Cayce way back in the 20s. He was called no. the Sleeping Prophet. He would be classified as part of that New Age, you know, way of thinking. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, so anyway. What, so what else is new with you? Well, I wanted to talk just very briefly today about this whole, um, you know, checking out, bugging out, um, buying ammunition and food and, and going someplace remote to escape. And maybe we can continue that next time, too. But well, what, what do you mean? People, people are <laughs> going off the grid? Oh, yeah, yeah. I was reading an article about you know, what they call the American Redoubt, the American Fortress, which is Idaho, parts of Montana, eastern Oregon, Washington, places like that, where the land sales are going through the roof these days. No kidding. Yeah. People so are, are the gun sales, well, I think. Well, I think so. You know, and and I, you know, I'm not trying to knock that or, or anything, or support that or anything. I'm just saying it's a phenomenon that people, I think... And, and, and what I really wanted to get into, and maybe we can do it more next time, is this whole thing of, is there an apocalypse head? Are we headed for an apocalypse? Well, is there? Are we no. looking for the big red moon? What are we doing? Well, I, I, don't, I don't predict the future. I'm yeah. not one of those kinds of well, guys no, that does Well, no, the second that. coming. That's what everybody wants to know, right? That's why everyone's being good. Well, I, I, that's one of the things I wanted to talk about in terms of the Christian view of the future is certainly one that in, includes an apocalyptic you know, disaster kind of a scenario, but the end result of that is good news, and that's what I want. So the big apocalypse com comes, and Jesus, the the, the 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 skies open up, and the big old staircase up to heaven comes down, and Jesus welcomes you up. Is that what happens? Well, the return of Jesus is certainly that's talked about. That's kind of how it's laid out. Well, yeah, I don't yeah. know about the staircase, but yeah, the, well, it, that's it, part it, of it. Is it like a rainbow, like going back to Odin? <laughs> Odin. <laughs> I don't know what Odin has to do with it, but, but yeah, I, I, the, the, the Christian message is that God is going to overcome evil in the end, even though there may be a disaster between now and then. Is there going to be? Well, I think it's inevitable we have something that's going to happen, don't you? I mean, you know, I mean, we've got all this sorts November. of things coming together. Yeah. <laughs> well, and and now, now that you bring that up, no matter who's elected in November, there's a group of people that is going to think that the end of the world is taking place. <laughs> this so. is Michael Bogart yeah. right here. He teaches out at West Hills College Religious Studies. He's here with me every Wednesday. Mike, thanks for coming Always by. Always a pleasure, Chuck. Yep. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Stick around. <laughs> 